Okay, software-defined networking is about, first and foremost, physically separating out the brains from the power on a device. That's what we're doing. Physically separating out the brains and the power on the device. So here's the traditional network. Here's the traditional brains versus power versus management. And what I'm saying is we're going to take the brains out and put them right there. What is that? That is what we call a controller. A controller. That's right. A controller. So the controller has the brains. The controller has the management capabilities as well. The controller is going to have policies defined on it. And when policies are defined, those policies can then decide how do the devices have to be configured. And once it determines that, it can then configure all the devices for us. So essentially, the controller, the brains, the control plane is right here now, as well as the management plane, all right here. And then our data plane is still on the devices. So the, the data, data plane, still the power, still the devices. But we've moved the brains, we've moved the management to a centralized controller. And what is our ultimate goal? To manage all these devices as a single entity. That's what we're trying to do. All these devices now, we can manage as a single entity from this controller. Let that sink in. How are you configuring your networks right now? Are you configuring your networks one device at a time? Meaning when a change needs to be made, you go to this device and this device and this device and this device and then that one and that one and that one and that one. And then next thing you know, you spent the last Three days making those changes, only to realize there weren't the right changes. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen to you. But that's like the worst case scenario. So in this example here, we use our controller. We spend the time to create the policies and the changes that need to be made. And then we execute it and all the devices get adjusted at the same time. If I need to roll all that back, I do it right there. So an entire network can be modified with the click of a button. It can be rolled back at the click of a button. So now how does communication take place? Because we need communication between this controller and these network devices. Well, the communication is going to take place using what are known as self-bound API, self-bound application programming interfaces. So the main objective of these is to just provide communication and management between the controller and the devices themselves. It's the language they're speaking. That's all. Look at the options we have over here for our APIs for southbound communication. We have OpFlex, NetConf, OpenFlow, Telnet, SSH. Some of these you already know. Some of these you don't know. You'll learn them, the ones you don't know, over time. But just think about SSH. We can still manage our devices via SSH. Yeah, in some scenarios, of course you can. But instead of having to do each device individually, you can do it all from a centralized controller and have all that information propagated to the devices as needed. So very, very powerful way of configuring, managing, controlling our devices. And things like OpenFlow and OpFlex are going to be the ones that you'll primarily learn about and explore in great detail as you dive deeper into software-defined networking and the various solutions that are available on the market, whether they're open solutions or Cisco's ACI. But we can't forget about SDN in reverse, networks defined by software. Are you cringing, right? As a network administrator, <laughs> the network's defined by software. Stop saying that. Okay, we went back into our turtle shell, right? <laughs> come back out, come back out of your turtle shell. All right, so what are the role, or what are the roles that applications are gonna play in our organization? How are applications gonna affect software-defined networking? Well, we're creating programmable networks. Why? All right, well, here's the reason why we're trying to create programmable networks. When was the last time you had a meeting 
about some sort of application that was uh, developed within your organization that is, you know, highly innovative. It's, it's the newest, latest and greatest invention and your company is the one that's going to deploy it. And you've been in meetings after meetings after meetings as the IT network guru for your organization. And the problem you're running into is that your network's just not going to support it without significant capital expenditures and you having to learn newer ways to deploy these particular applications and services because they are just so elaborate now. Why? Because that's what the customers need. It's as simple as that. So we're taking significant amount of time to deploy this application. We are running into major roadblocks because of our infrastructure. Developers aren't happy. Management's not happy. I'm not happy. Because the only way we can solve this problem is by spending lots and lots of money, but nobody wants to give me the money. We've all been there. But if you want to compete in today's industry, fast-paced industry, you can't let your network slow you down anymore. And I'm not talking about 10 gig versus 100 gig connections. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ability to roll out the applications on the network without the network itself as a whole being the bottleneck, slowing us down because the app won't run on it. Right? Instead of having developers build applications that will work on our networks, which is what we've been doing for ages, we want to allow developers to build applications that will work on our networks no matter what. That's right. It's the way we have to change our thought process. We have to understand that the applications are going to control us going forward. Networks defined by software. Networks defined by applications. It could have been called application-defined networking. It could have been done that way as well. All right, but SDN sounded better than ADN. So programmable networks that can adjust based on the application needs. Therefore, we can deploy applications in days instead of months, and in some cases, minutes instead of hours. That's very, very important in today's environment of fast-paced applications and networking and services. Things are constantly changing. If I, the IT administrator, am the bottleneck of getting that application out the door, then I'm the problem. And I do not want to be the problem. So I have to understand the role that applications play. So how am I going to understand the role that applications play? You ever heard of the word DevOps? Oh, yes. There you go. Back in your turtle shell again, right? Whoop. All right. Come out of that turtle shell. DevOps. A lot of us network administrators hear that term. And they cringe, right? We shake. Oh, DevOps, what is that? Well, it is an amalgamation of two different divisions of an organization. Development, where our applications are made, right? And IT operations, where most of us listening in today spend our time, IT operations. So our goal is what? Our goal is to make sure that our organization can build, test, release software faster and more reliably. That's what our goal is. We want our network to be able to quickly adjust to the demands that are being placed on it by the various applications and services that are deployed. And be able to change based on newer applications that are coming down the pipe without having to wait months or years. We want to do it in days. We want to do it in hours. So what do we have here? We have two different silos, right? We have developers and we have IT operations. So what's in between them? It's the fancy word called DevOps. DevOps. All this is describing is someone, something, some process, some service. It could be you. You are Mr. or Mrs. DevOps that has the ability to bring development and IT operations together in a cohesive way, making it just all flow and work together. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> it means either somebody in the world of development 
starts to understand IT operations. Or somebody in the world of IT operations needs to start, start understanding development a little bit better. If you are that person, right, you fit into the DevOps category, and you're going to be the one that has the ability now to make all of this happen, make this programmable network occur, that's where DevOps comes into play. Do you want to be that person? You can be. You have the opportunity to do that. Right? Expand your skills from just being an IT network administrator or an IT server administrator as part of IT operations and start expanding just a bit. I'm not telling you to start building apps or coding. Right? That's what the developers do. What I'm telling you to do is start understanding what's going on and maybe getting a little bit of coding under your belt. Not so you can build full out applications, but so you can understand how these applications are not going to integrate with your overall network infrastructure. So let's think back to that question we said, do I need to learn programming? You don't, but ask yourself this, do you want to be this person? Do you want to be the one that makes all of this work? Now, let's pause right there. True software defined networking is about making this happen. Allowing those applications to tell the controller what they need. And in the controller doing its magic, getting things done that it needs to do, and then distributing the information to the network devices and configuring them as necessary. So apps tell the controller, controller configures the network. Do you need to take it this far? No, of course not. You don't have to, right? You may want to start slowly. Let's just worry about the network side of things, right? We'll still allow the developers to do what they need to do, but we won't allow those applications to directly control what is happening. You don't have to take it this far. So when you hear the term software defined networking and you think about it this way, and this is what makes you go down in your turtle shell and hide, well, you don't have to take it this far. You can take it to the point where you just have a controller that can programmatically configure and control our networking devices.